How's it going YouTube? This is Wake Run Collapse and in front of you today I have 75 packs of 5 booster boxes of the Legendary Shine collection that have come in from AmiAmi. You're wondering where they are, they're inside the sealed box. I actually took the invoice out of there and we're just going to open it right from the very beginning. I've never had an opportunity to do a straight from AmiAmi to a booster box opening video on my channel before. So I figured now would be a good opportunity to do it. It does take a little while to cut through the plastic on here because they uh, they do kind of overstuff and overstack the uh, the plastic on the top just because it holds the invoice and everything. But we're gonna go straight from the box right to your viewing faces and your listening ears and stuff like that. We've got the card that's inside, the AmiAmi card. This is pretty standard, but they change it once every month or two. I've got like three of those now. We're going to take out the packing paper that they put inside to make sure that everything is all nice and neat together. Now it's going to go over here in this box that I haven't revealed yet. Or maybe I have. And inside we have our five boxes of Legendary Shine Collection. So we're going to take those out and line them up. We're going to open every one of these boxes in this video. Two. There's three. Of course, there's more packing paper in there as well. I will be recycling that out. Four and five. Now let's get rid of the box. This is no longer relevant to our interests. And you get to check them all out in the background. So that's pretty cool. I am quite excited for this. I think just because of the way that these uh, these boxes go, I think I'm probably just going to cut through all five boxes now. And rather than fight with the uh, the packaging, I think I'm just going to take all the packs out and lay them on the desk. Now, interestingly, although we are not going to have a personal record for the most packs opened on a single video, or at least on my channel. Uh, I am going to break a personal record for how many holographic cards I've pulled in a single video, uh, depending on your definition of what it means to be a holographic card. There are 75 packs, and figuring that the last card in every pack is, in my mind, the hollow pull of the pack. We're going to be having 75 of those or better. The EXs that are inside as well. But I suppose if you qualify the regular cards as holographic, because they are a bit sparkly, uh, you're going to see 300 holographic pulls in this, uh, in this video, which is also pretty awesome to think about. So make sure that if you like videos, openings like this, if you like the fact that I go a little above and beyond and go a little ridiculous with some of my some of my openings of new sets make sure that you go down and you show your support by hitting the like button I really do appreciate it it's a great way to gauge uh, whether you guys are interested in what I'm doing and obviously I do check the likes I don't really pay attention to dislikes to be honest because uh, if somebody really has a problem with my videos and they want to help they're gonna leave a comment below so if I've got some dislikes on a video, it really doesn't bother me all that much. So boxes 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 out of 20, not 25, uh, 5 boxes out of the 8 that I have. Force of habit, if you didn't know. Uh, this is going to look kind of hilarious. I kind of wanted to stack them all up and see if they'll even stand. Oh, I don't know that they will. Yeah, they're a bit too wobbly, but this is what 75 packs of Legendary Shine Collection looks like. So, oh man, so many, so many packs. So many packs. Yeah, the design of the boxes really makes it a little not conducive to, uh, to doing anything special with them. So we're just going to just go nuts and start opening packs. I'm hoping to keep this video around half an hour, roughly. Uh, I think I'm going to adjust my lighting a little bit. Let's see this a little bit better. Alright, first out of 75 packs. Braviary, Hippopotas, Inke, and Latios. I do, in fact, have an extra package of KMC sleeves at my disposal. 
So that will likely be helpful. Here we have Halucha, Rufflet, Chespin, and Palkia. After this video is done, I'm going to be going through my collection to see exactly what I have for each card. I'll be checking on eBay and see what those cards are selling for, but I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to be selling my cards for. I just want to make sure that the uh, the pull ratios are reasonable enough. Of course, there's a hollow in every pack, but I just want to make sure that I have enough copies of the card to sell them at the prices that I want to sell them at. Because believe it or not, it can be a problem if you sell them too cheap. And it's not a monetary one, it's an availability one. It's uh, the problem that I ran into with uh, Shiny Rayquazas. I probably should have sold them for a little bit higher price when I was first selling them. They were brand new, it generated a lot of interest. Uh, that lighting working okay? Uh, there's an Arceus. Uh, I had a lot of uh, interest in the cards and they were brand new. And I sold them for $5 a piece, and unfortunately, I ended up turning down... Honestly, I can't even count. It's probably, I probably turned down 20 people total who wanted to buy copies of that card. Now, obviously, you guys know that generally, I end up with more copies of a particular card rather than less. Usually end up with extras, with duplicates, with, uh, with cards like Hollows and some EXs out of uh, new releases that don't sell. But that's another reason why I only decided to go with eight boxes of this set. And there's a Pikachu EX. Because I completed this set in the first box, and I could sell the other ones as like, sealed boxes, but it's just not something I'm interested in. Not something that strikes my fancy. Besides, it encourages you guys to go to Amiami, go to the website, to pre-order from the website because the prices are the best. And if you can get that aligned and get it in order and know what you're going to purchase, it makes it so much easier to make a decision for yourself. You don't have to worry about it. Now I will say that a lot of people kind of got screwed on Legendary Shine Collection because the thing was out of stock on Amiami for over a month right up until release. And even if you were able to catch a purchase right after they went back in, it still took a little while to be shipped. So a lot of people went elsewhere. A lot of people used eBay, or some other uh, some other sources. But generally, if you have a good idea of what you're going to find in a set and how you're going to approach it, generally would do very well to pre-order from Amiami. And you could even use those savings, if you are a Poketuber of some kind, to get some faster shipping. Something that has generally worked out for me pretty well. Alright, Meowth, Chespin, Braviary, and Reshiram. Again, sale video is going to be posted separately, guys. It's going to be after this video, uh, maybe a day or two after the video. Now, I'm shooting this on uh, on Wednesday. I'm shooting this on Wednesday because I actually have the opportunity to sit down and do it. Oh, hope it EX. Cool stuff. All right. So before I get into that, I do have another question for you guys. I want to know what you think of the holographic pattern in this set. Now of course the, the regular sparkliness all over the card, I don't think anybody really has a problem with that, but it's this one. These like cross symbols, these plus signs, is very bright. I like it for a one-off set like this, I do not want to see it in the next sets, the Mewtwo sets, uh, Blue Impact and Red Flash, I do not want to see that holographic pattern on all the holo cards. I'm simply not interested. A Regigigas. But I think it works really nicely for a set of this variety with all the legendaries and the, uh, the special artwork and things like that. It brings something a little new to the table to, I don't know, spice things up for people. It's just something that I would prefer to avoid, if at all possible, 
with everything else that's going on. So let me know in the comments below what you think of the uh, the holographic pattern for this set. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Another Russia Ram. Actually, I'm just now realizing that I am going to be able to tell which box I'm on. This is the second of five boxes. Uh, and Oh, there's another Hoopa. Uh, the reason is because there are two different pack artworks and an odd number of packs in each box. Uh, you'll be able to tell when you get two of the same pack arts, and it's this one. You get two of those in a row. That is going to be what signifies the, uh, the start of a new box. You can actually see a couple more instances of that here. Meowth, Chespin, Braviary, and Palkia. Oh, well, why are you going there? You go over there. Some more card and pack goodness. I think a, uh, a set like this just generally has a little less prestige. I mean, no secret rares, no ultra rares inside. Smaller set, and we're just coming off of Bandit Ring. Plus, Ancient Origins is, what, just about to hit? Is that, like, a few days from now for English collectors? Is it, like, August 5th or 15th or something like that? It's, it's sometime soon. I mean, I know that there are packs that got leaked, and I saw some people open some stuff, but... Oh, there we go. But overall, it's kind of a kind of an unfortunate time to release a set, especially with the popularity of Bandit Ring. I wonder, in fact, how this set is selling in Japan. I'm kind of curious. I don't know anybody that has access to sales figures for something like a TCG set, but I'm curious to know. I mean, I'd be curious to know how sets sell in general. I wonder what is the uh, the highest selling set uh, in recent memory. I wonder if it's Wild Blaze for, for Japan. I'm willing to bet that a really good seller for an English set was uh, was Primal Clash. That seemed to be the time that a lot of people started uh, started opening extra boxes, started hunting booster cases, doing crazy packs because of the insane volume of secret rares and ultra rares inside. So this stack is getting a little out of control in here. We'll have to make sure that we clean this up every now and again. Uh, three more packs from this, the second box. It looks like we're kind of settling into a pace. Uh, Rufflet, Chespin, Meowth, and Regigigas. Pack number 29 gives us breaks in. Oh! A sliding card, Dedene, Fennekin, and White Kiram. One thing I don't like about those KMC sleeves is that they end up being slippery. So pack number 30, and then I'm going to take a second to stretch, take a break, sort some stuff out. We have Noibat, Wabafet, Pancham, and Black Kiram to finish off that, and that little part there. Yeah, sorry guys, I gotta stretch my back out a little bit. It was uh, bothering me rather significantly while I was at the Red Sox game last night. I mean, it was Tuesday night, but it's the last night as of when I'm shooting this video. I'm gonna move all these cards to the back. I don't know that I can do a recap for something like this, but... But it was pretty awesome. Uh, we went to Fenway, we went into town, obviously. We went into town, oh, we gotta clean some of this up too. Uh, we went into town for the Red Sox game. I worked uh, like a 6 to 3.30. 
And then my better half came and met me at work, and I drove into a uh, nearby city, small city, more like a nearby large town, um, and we took what's called the red line in. And, uh, there will be more information on the red line in a coming video, because I'm planning on doing something about that. Uh, as we get back into the pack openings, um, we took the red line in, but my back was really bothering me for some reason. I think it was probably all the standing that I was doing while we were waiting to get to the ballpark. And eventually the pain subsided, which is great, because I got to watch Pedro Martinez, who was a great, great baseball pitcher. Uh, he didn't just play for us, he played for Montreal before us. And he was, he was an excellent pitcher. I think he won a Cy Young for Montreal. And then he won um, two Cy Youngs and a World Series ring with us. And then he ended up going to the Mets, and then I think he played his last year in Philly. But he was absolutely tremendous. Uh, when he pitched in 1999, it was maybe one of, the best, uh, one of the best pitching seasons that we've ever seen. Uh, he was 23-4. and four. Uh, He struck out five guys in two innings in the All-Star game. I remember watching on a tiny TV when I was away at summer camp, uh, everybody on my floor, uh, because we, we stayed at a college. I know, not exactly summer camp, I understand that, but um, we stayed at a local college that I ended up attending. And uh, we all huddled around, it was like 50 of us in a room, all huddled around this little like 13-inch TV, uh, watching him strike out Sosa and McGuire. And he struck out uh, Jeff Bagwell and some other guys too. Uh, and the other uh, the other guy that got out in that inning uh, was thrown out on a strike him out throw him out while he was trying to steal second. And it's just one of those memories that you carry with you. So uh, watching him have his number retired at Fenway was really amazing. Uh, they talked about how he'd just been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, there are a lot of other baseball players, uh, local baseball players as well as um, international ones that were. They were on hand to uh, to show their support for Pedro. Uh, Kurt Schilling was there. Uh, Jason Veritek, who used to be a catcher for us. I know I'm getting onto a, like a crazy baseball rant, but to be honest, it's just something to talk about while I open this. But it was uh, it was pretty special to be able to see. He got a huge ovation from the crowd, and it was uh, it was a very enjoyable evening. Even though we got totally waxed by the White Sox. They scored five in the first. And we ended up losing uh, nine to four, I think. But it was still very fun. In fact, I have my ticket folded up over here. You can see where I was sitting. There's my ticket. Right over there. Grandstand section 27, which is like the third base line. Pretty awesome. It was fun. So yes, I have a life. I go out and do stuff that is not Pokemon. Occasionally, I have the time to do it, so I want to do something that's going to be fun and enjoyable. And right now, that fun and enjoyable thing is opening Legendary Shine Collection and sharing my personal life with you guys. I do have something else that I want to talk about as well, but that is going to be shared probably in a few minutes. Gotta make sure that this uh, this video doesn't run on terribly long. There we go. Wobbuffet, Rufflet, uh, Fennekin, and Latias. And yes, if I say Blaziken in in, um, in place of Brakeson, don't worry about it. I know it's a Brakeson. Uh, Hippopotas, Meowth, Chespin, and Dialga. Very cool choices for the backgrounds, I think, are just as nice as what they do for the actual Pokemon in these, uh, in these special holographic cards that are inside here. They do nice work. Nearing the end of box number three. Noibat, Chespin, Dedene, and Regigigas. Sorry, I'm going to adjust my seat a little bit. Yeah. And 
And last pack of the box, we're going to have the Brakeson, Wobbuffet, Pancham, and Hoopa EX. Cool way to finish that one up. Looks like another 3 EX box that we just experienced. So we'll go on to box 4 of this video and box 7 overall. Still 30 packs to go. Uh, Pancham, Frogadier, Inke, and Latias. So I guess now is another good time to ask you guys another question. You can leave a separate comment if you would like. I'm curious to know if you guys are excited for or interested in any other particular event that may be happening this summer. Or I'd like you to share with me what was your highlight of the summer so far. Or winter if you're Australian, that's cool too. I'm sure you can still probably do awesome stuff from time to time in the winter time. I know we do around these parts, uh, even if it's snowing like crazy. Can't imagine the snow is a terrible factor in Australia. I imagine it's probably a fair bit warm in uh, most parts of the country. I'm sure Enlisted Leaf could tell me all about it. White Curum. Uh, one of the highlights of my summer was doing something that I never thought I would I would do. Uh, I'm not a much of a concert goer. I love music, but I'm not much of a concert goer uh, to the point that I've been to one concert in my life ever. I went to a Coldplay concert in 2009, Coldplay being my favorite band. I went to them and I saw them once and it was really awesome, but I haven't been to a concert since. Until, if you will remember from my Bandit Ring openings, I mentioned this, I purchased concert tickets to see Taylor Swift with my better half, with my girl. I bought them for her for her birthday. So we went to Gillette Stadium, where they usually play New England Patriots games, to see her. I am not a Taylor Swift fan. It doesn't mean that I would walk on the other side of the road if I saw her coming or something. I think she's... I don't know. I think she's a great person. I just don't listen to her music in general. So I went through and I, in an effort to increase my enjoyment, I made an effort to learn some more of her music. And to my surprise, some of the newer stuff is actually pretty good. And it's stuff that I'll probably keep on my iPod, because I still have an iPod. I have an iPod and no smartphone, so I need a good place to keep my music. And that is probably as good a place as any. So there are definitely some oh who be X. There are definitely some cards that I like uh, some cards, some songs that I like off of 1989. Uh, I like a couple of the songs that play on the radio. I like the Kendrick Lamar version of Bad Blood. I always like Shake It Off. Uh, there's a couple other songs in there that I liked. And we went to the concert, and even though I felt a little lost from time to time because there were songs that played that I'd never heard before, uh, she killed it. She was. Amazing. I'm gonna to try to remember to put a uh, put a picture, a link to a picture that I posted on Twitter last week, the the morning that I got home from the concert. Uh, I'll try to remember to post that and leave that for you guys. So you guys can check it out. Uh, we had floor seats, which was expensive but awesome, and we had uh, some pretty good shots. And I actually used my YouTube camera's picture function to try to get good photos, but because the stage was so well lit, or she was at least, uh, it was difficult to get shots that didn't seem wildly, you know, overexposed and tons of tons of light filtering and stuff. But I got a few good ones, and I posted my favorite of the bunch. And, um, she had special guests uh, walk the moon showed up and they did uh, they did Shut Up and Dance, which if you listen to a radio ever, is always, always on. And then we sat in traffic forever trying to leave and got home a little after 2 a.m. But it was all worth it. She loved it. She was out of her mind excited about it and it lived up to her expectations. And uh, honestly, I gotta give props to Taylor Swift for putting on a really fun and energetic concert. And for being on stage for more than two hours. That part was cool as well. Uh, Noibat, Wobbuffet, Braviary, and Dialga are going to finish up the fourth box in this video. Straighten these guys out. I do not have my ticket stub with me. 
But I have this, which is pretty cool. Uh, they would use this um, this bracelet, and you'd wear the bracelet. I'll put, push these back to the side here. Uh, you'd wear the bracelet, and they would send like little pulses, and it would light up all the uh, all the bracelets at the same time, or it would light them up randomly depending on what kind of uh, what kind of thing they wanted to do. As far as artwork was concerned, I'm going to try to buzz through the remainder of these packs because I want to keep the video right around 30 minutes, like I mentioned. But that might be a little bit of a challenge, seeing as it's 25:37. But yeah, overall it was a it was a fun time. So let me know if you guys are planning on doing anything fun for the remainder of the summer, even if it's not something on you know, in that same genre, even if it's not a Pokemon thing or music thing, or maybe you, there's like a movie you're looking forward to or something, which is perfectly fine. Make sure to share that with me too. Uh, maybe you're stoked because Mission Impossible 5 is coming out. Or, I don't know. Whatever it's floating your boat. Just let me know. Noibat, Chespin, Dene, White Curum. This pile of hollows is getting getting crazy. Uh, I'm not going to do a recap for this because you guys all know what the packs look like. You all know what the cards look like. You know what the set looks like. I don't think you're going to need that. And it is going to keep the video, I believe, just under 30 minutes, which means I'm not going to have to splice this together. I'm going to be able to just show the cards. Latias. You can squeeze all 75 packs and all 75 special cards into a single video on my hard drive and then recharge the battery and shoot some more stuff. Uh, Dialga? Man. Oh, don't do that to me, Scissors. You've been so strong for so long. Don't give me a hard time. Dedenne, Noibat, Wobbuffet, and Reshiram. So yes, it is worth mentioning once more as we get down to the nittiest of the gritty with these packs that the sale video is going to go live whenever the sale video goes live. I don't take pre-orders for cards. You can't reserve stuff. You can't pay in advance. You can't do anything like that. All the rules are going to appear in that actual sale video. I will try to make a list of my pulls so that I can show you what I made in eight boxes to give you a better idea of what kind of pulls you can expect if you buy a similar number of boxes or even a dissimilar number of boxes. But hopefully the takeaway from this is that this is an awesome set and pounding through 75 packs will get you 75 amazing cards and in fact some other cards that you might enjoy as well. Move those packs back. So yes, I want to thank everybody one more time for watching. I really do appreciate your viewership. It means quite a bit. Uh, I've accumulated quite a following for what is generally the 100 pack opening videos. Now this one being just 75, but I'm not going to order two more booster boxes and cut five packs out of it. To make it another 100 pack video, we're just going to stay at 75. But hey, given that we went from a sealed box that came in the mail to uh, opening all these packs and showing all these cards in a single video and cut it under half an hour, I think it's pretty cool. Dialga, and one more pack to go. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. I really do love the support that comes from you guys, even if you can't come up with any comments that you want to share. The mere fact that you came here, you watch, you hit the like button means a lot to me. Froki, Braviary, Halucha, and Arceus is the very last card. Thank you again for watching. I'm going to sleeve this guy up right now because I don't want to risk any damage. And the next time you'll see these cards is either, depending on my upload schedule, either a complete set video or a sale video. In fact, the complete set video might already be up. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do in the future with these uploads. So uh, thanks again and take it easy.